I've been toying with the idea of installing a heat pump for the last few years, but I've put it off as there's technically nothing wrong with my current non-condensing boiler. It just works and keeps going, but it's getting a bit long in the tooth at 26 years old, not that efficient, and it's not that great for the environment. But are heat pumps really worth it? How much might I save per year? Will the savings ever pay for themselves, or should I just get a new condensing gas boiler? And what about if you have solar panels, battery storage, and an electric vehicle like we do? In this video, I'm going to share with you how I looked at the numbers and what other factors helped me decide whether to go ahead and make the switch from a gas boiler to a heat pump so you can work out whether it's worth it for you too. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Shan. Our five bed detached house built in 1999 in the northeast of England has a 26 year old Potterton Suprema 70 non condensing boiler which has an efficiency of around 76%. We have 370 millimeters of loft insulation, cavity wall insulation, double glazing, and a 300 liter hot water tank in the loft. We use approximately 18,205 kilowatt hours of gas per year for our central heating and hot water. The current off-gem energy price cap for gas, July to the end of September 2025, is 6.33p per kilowatt hour, with a daily standing charge of 29.82p per day. Using these rates over the year, this would cost us £1,152.38 with a standing charge of £108.84. But let's not forget our gas boiler also uses 200 kilowatt hours of electricity, which at the current price cap of 25.73p per kilowatt hour of electricity is £51.46. That's a total of £1,312.68 per year. The most recent official UK government emissions factor for natural gas is 0 0.18290 kilograms CO2e or carbon dioxide equivalent per kilowatt hour. So for our 18,205 kilowatt hours of gas, we contribute approximately 3.3 tons of CO2 to our carbon footprint. But what if we skip the heat pump bit and just did a straight swap for a more modern condensing gas boiler with say an efficiency of 92%. After all, this has been the one thing that has been repeatedly advised. In our EPC when we bought the house and at most of our annual boiler services since moving in. To work this out, we should first calculate the actual useful heat delivered by my current boiler by multiplying the gas used 18,205 kilowatt hours by the boiler efficiency 0.76, which gives us 13,836 kilowatt hours. To deliver the same 13,836 kilowatt hours of useful heat with a 92% efficient boiler, we can divide 13,836 kilowatt hours by 0.92, which gives us 15,039 kilowatt hours. At 6.33p, that 15,039 kilowatt hours of gas, including the standard charge and the same amount of electricity, would cost us £1,112.27 per year. That's a saving of £200.41 over the year compared to my current non-condensing gas boiler. Consuming 15,039 kilowatt hours of gas would mean a 2.75 tonne contribution of CO2 to our carbon footprint. Installing a new efficient system boiler would cost us around £3,500. I'm looking at improving the efficiency of my heating system with the aim of reducing my energy costs. Hence why I think payback is an important thing to consider here. With a saving of £200.41 per year, it would take 17 and a half years to pay off, not taking inflation into account. Now let's consider the numbers with a heat pump in a house that doesn't have solar, battery storage or an electric vehicle. But before we do, let's recap the basics of how heat pumps work. Heat pumps don't actually create heat energy. They simply collect it and move it from the outside air, ground or water, transferring it inside your home, where it can be used in radiators, underfloor heating, and to supply hot water for taps and showers. Heat pumps typically deliver three to four units of heat from each unit of electricity needed to run them. This is much more efficient than gas boilers, which produce less than one unit of heat for each unit of gas used. This efficiency is also known as the coefficient of performance or COP, and is a vital piece of information to show how efficiently a heat pump is working. The typical average COP for central heating and hot water are 3.5 and 2.5 respectively. I got a provisional cost for installing a heat pump via Octopus Energy for £5,737.88. And this figure will help us take a closer look at the potential savings we might have with a heat pump. For a fair comparison, I'm going to use the gas figures we've used so far. But for electricity, I'm going to use a specific heat pump tariff such as Octopus Energy's Cozy Tariff. 
The unit rates in my region for the COSY tariff at the time of making this video include a day rate of 24.96p per kilo hour, off-peak rate of 12.24p per kilo hour, and finally a peak rate between 4 and 7pm of 37.44p per kilo hour. So starting with our central heating using heat pump. We heat our home for 8 months or 242 days of the year, generally from September to April, which I suspect is typical for most homes in the UK. With our 12,000 kilowatt hours of gas we use currently for our central heating, our 76% efficient boiler gives us 9,120 kilowatt hours of useful heat. We can then divide this by a cup of 3.5 to work out our annual consumption of electricity, which will be 2,606 kilowatt hours per year. To work out the annual costs, I've multiplied this consumption figure by 20.47p per kilowatt hour, which assumes a consumption of 35% of the day, 50% at the off-peak, and 15% at the peak rate on the cosy tariff. This gives us a £533.52 total cost over the year for central heating alone. For hot water, we use 6,205 kilowatt hours of gas. Our 76% efficient boiler gives us 4,719.8 kilowatt hours of useful heat. We can then divide this by a cup of 2.5 to work out our annual consumption of electricity, which would be 1,888 kilowatt hours per year. To work out the annual cost, I've multiplied this consumption figure by 12.24p per kilowatt hour, as it would make the most sense to heat the hot water via the off-peak rate on the cosy tariff. This works out at £230.97 over the year for hot water heating. With a heat pump, we'd be aiming to remove our gas supply entirely, thereby emitting the standing charge of 29.82p per day, which would be a saving of £108.84 per year. As before, our gas boiler uses around 200 kilo hours of electricity, which we can now remove from our total cost. That gives us a total saving of £548.19 over the year, with a heat pump compared to our conventional non-condensing gas boiler. With an indicative cost of installing heat pump from Octopus Energy to the tune of £5,737.88, it would take us 10.5 years to pay this off, not taking inflation into account. Consuming 4,494 kilo hours of electricity, with a good chunk of that being in the off-peak period, would mean an approximate contribution of 0.46 tonnes of CO2 to our carbon footprint. Those are some pretty impressive savings so far, but can we do even better? Finally then, let's consider the numbers with a heat pump in our scenario with solar, battery storage and an electric vehicle. For the electricity rate here, I've used an average figure of 16.8p per kilowatt hour, taken from the 27.45p day rate, 16.5p export rate I'd be missing out on by not exporting that electricity, and finally a 6.7p off-peak rate. These rates are from the Eon Nextrive V7 import tariff I'm on, combined with the 16.5p per kilo hour export on the next export exclusive V2 export tariff. Again, starting with central heating over the same eight months using heat pump, our annual consumption of electricity would be 2,606 kilowatt hours per year. To work out the annual cost, I've assumed an electricity consumption of 30% at the off-peak and 70% at the peak rate on the Eon Nextrive tariff. You'll recall we have an 8.2 kilo hour battery, but usually in the depths of winter, this is already spoken for by the rest of the house, and we usually end the day with around 20 to 30 percent battery left. For the purposes of this calculation and for our scenario, I'm going to completely discount the battery storage. So 2,606 kilo hours multiplied by 0.3 gives me 781.8 kilo hours. This multiplied by my off-peak rate of 6.7p divided by 100 equals 52 pounds and 38 pence. And the peak rate would be 2,606 kilo hours multiplied by 0.7 gives me 1,824.2 kilo hours. This multiplied by 21.98 pence, which is an average of the 27.45 import day rate and 16.5p export rate I'd be missing out on by not exporting, equals 400 pounds and 96 pence. This works out at 453 pounds and 34 pence in total over the year for central heating. As before for hot water, our annual consumption of electricity is 1,888 kilo hours per year. To work out the annual costs, I multiplied this figure by 6.7 pence as we can heat the hot water off peak and store it in our 300 litre hot water cylinder to use it throughout the day. This works out at 126 pounds and 50 pence over the year for hot water. 
As mentioned before, we can get rid of the standing charge of 29.82 pence per day, and we'd also save the 200 kilo hours of electricity needed for the gas boiler over the year. That gives us a total saving of 732 pounds and 84 pence over the year, with a heat pump combined with our existing solar panels, battery and EV, compared to a conventional gas boiler, which is pretty impressive. For those of you asking how much the solar panels and battery costs then, well, you're right, but this is being considered in their own payback timeline. Having an EV is relevant too, as it opens up a whole load of tariffs which I wouldn't be able to access if I had solar panels and a battery alone. For example, the Eon and XDrive tariff I'm on has just released the version 8, which now states to be eligible, you must own or lease an electric vehicle. If you've got an EV and you like the look of the Eon and XDrive tariff and plan to sign up, then please consider using the channel's referral link in the video description box below to split £100 of Eon Energy credit between you and the channel. Thank you in advance if you do sign up via a referral link, it really does help keep the channel going. With our provisional cost of installing a heat pump from Oxford's Energy of £5,737.88, it would take 7.8 years for it to pay itself off, again not taking into account inflation. That's certainly more like it, and consuming 4,494 kilohours of electricity, with even more of that being off-peak or by consuming solar we're generating, would mean an approximate contribution of 0.26 tonnes of CO2 to our carbon footprint, which would be a massive reduction compared to the 3.3 tonnes we're currently contributing. So there we have it, the biggest savings to be had by switching to a heat pump are with solar panels, battery storage, and probably most importantly, an EV on an EV tariff, with those super cheap off-peak rates. With this information, I'm going to explore getting a heat pump further, especially as over the next 10 to 15 years, gas is expected to remain relatively expensive and could rise above inflation in the last period. This could be made worse if there are further supply disruptions, increased global demand, or geopolitical instability. I also suspect electricity prices are likely to stay high, certainly above pre-pandemic levels, but may stabilise or even decline after 2030-2035, if renewable and grid investments are successful. Reports also consistently show that heat pumps can add value to UK properties, with most studies and experts citing a typical increase of 1.7 to 7%, with even the most conservative estimate of 1.7%, we could look to add £9,350 to our property's valuation. Furthermore, we already have a new hot water cylinder that was installed only a couple of years ago, and was highlighted that it could be modified in the future if needed for a heat pump. So I'm hopeful we should be able to keep this and therefore reduce the final install price. And a heat pump should last longer too, typically 15 to 25 years compared to a gas boiler, which may be 10 to 15 years. So, you can see my 26-year-old non-condensing gas boiler really is on borrowed time. Repairs for heat pumps are more costly, but are likely to decrease as they become more mainstream, particularly for routine and minor repairs. One of the other main drivers for switching from our gas boiler to a heat pump is that it's one of the most effective steps that we can take to dramatically reduce our home's carbon footprint. Heat pumps can cut your household's carbon emissions by up to a massive 70%, compared to a traditional gas boiler, even whilst on a standard electricity tariff. And as we've already seen, this is likely to be even higher for us given that we have solar panels, battery storage, and an off-peak tariff, which is typically the greenest time to consume electricity. Finally, they're safer too. Unlike gas boilers, heat pumps don't burn fuel inside your home, which eliminates the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning, a serious safety concern with gas appliances. Additionally, by removing the need for a gas flame, heat pumps also significantly lower fire risks making your home safer for you and your family. But do you agree with my findings and thoughts on getting a heat pump, or is it all just hot air? I'm already in the process of getting heat pump quotes from Optimus NG, Eon Next, and a Heat Geek Elite installer. And boy are there some pretty shocking variations in their proposals. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for free to join me on this journey, and be the first to know when that video lands on our heat pump surveys. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.